and uh, I had to make sure my tie was biblical today. <laughs> the books of the Bible, and uh, happy about happy to be here today. Uh, last week we talked about forgiveness. This week uh, we're in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, verse 1 through 28. I won't read all those verses, but some of them is our text. Uh, let me uh, say a prayer here. Father in heaven, I pray for uh, this day. Thank you for the good news. Uh, wish you uh, get a, getting a good report also for Randy. Give him a good day today and uh, strengthen him and the family. Thank you for this service to be honoring to you as well. In your precious name, amen. Daniel teaches us by example how to live righteously and godly in this present world. His consistent life and, and confidence in his God should be a great encouragement to us as we live in an ever-increasing godless uh, uh, culture and world. I was, I was um, sometimes I listened, uh, they call them NDE, near-death experiences. And I, I don't know, for some reason I like uh, being near death. I don't know, that doesn't sound right. But anyway, uh, but the guy was saying, oh, in the 80s, um, in the early 80s, people were becoming, uh, it looked like Earth was going to, people were going to destroy themselves. But now we've reached a place in our kind of like evolution where we're going we're gonna to all just come together and be happy and everything's going to go well. And I thought, well... And this guy was a Catholic, sounded like a good guy, but I thought, no. I think, and, he, and, he, and then he went on to say, and Revelation tells us that things are going to get bad, but I think we're all coming together now. And I thought, no. <laughs> some of that's true. Some of that's true. People are, some people are coming together. But, uh, <laughs> but in Daniel, you think of Daniel, he, uh, he wasn't a godless culture. And as we think of him, we think of the culture that we're in, we're thinking, well, can we be any worse than he was in his culture? Any worse than uh, the things that he had to deal with? Again, Daniel was born in around 621 B.C. He was only 16 years old when he was exiled, just old enough to look back on Israel's rich history. He would have been about 11 years old when King Josiah was killed. And so he saw the righteous rule of King Josiah. Remember, the Bible talks about Josiah. There wasn't a king really since him that did all he could to serve God. Except we know that the day that he went to battle, he really wasn't supposed to. <laughs> but he went out anyway. And sometimes, in being a Christian, we could be zealous. We could even become dogmatic, right? But... Um, in the end of the day, we still have to live our life. When we look around at this world, even during Corona, I remember one time talking to Pastor Roberts about life in general, and he said, Jeremy, with all that's going on, you just have to live your life. And you know, that's true. With all the uh, things we see, if turn on the media or whatever. I try not to turn on the media too much. I do to be a little bit updated. Sometimes I, I watch the Epic Times how do you say it? Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> you, you pronounced it right. Okay. <laughs> and like, uh, I like to be updated a little bit, but um, in the end of the day, we still have to function as believers in this world. We still have to, to do our best. Daniel returned, um, only returned to Judah after his first, of the first year of Cyrus's reign in Daniel 121 at age of 87. So really... Went to captivity when he's 16. He had to live 80, like 70 years in Babylon. 70 years. At, beginning as a teenager, he had to learn to do right. And it was, it was a very uh, hor uh, 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 evil society. But in spite of that, Daniel was consistent, confident, and courageous. We think of abortion. We think of chi um, back then they had abortion. In Daniel's day, they did. They had child sacrifice and other forms of infanticide, which were both legal and acceptable in the pagan societies from the earliest times. One of the major signs of depravity in ancient Rome was, was that they took unwanted babies 
and they were abandoned outside the city walls to die from exposure to the elements or attacks from wild foraging beast. The primitive Canaanites threw their ch children into the fire to their g god Molech. So is our contemporary society less depraved because we don't like put babies out, but but we bring them to the hospital to be incinerated, basically, to be that way. It is a big, commercialized, big business, abortion is. And uh, <laughs> there was a, there was a uh, vacation Bible school, and it was all about pro-life, and I'm thinking, no, I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> I'm going to do something else. Something happy, amen, oh well. My mom was... Um, um, she, of course, you know, there's, we have seven, there's seven boys. And uh, when she went to the doctor one day, and uh, towards her last two babies, the doctor tried to talk her into having abortions. One day, my mom was going to the, her doctor's checkup, and she saw a pro-life group outside. And she thought, man, they're killing babies in this hospital? Like it was a surprise to her, like she should have known. <laughs> And she grabbed one of the protesters' signs and was marching along with them. Well, when she got into the doctor's office, the doctor was basically very irate, angry with her that she would, had thought to join that group. Um, but, you know, um, God does care about li life. God's law says, thou shalt not kill. But, you know, it written into our law is you're allowed, you're allowed to kill. But man's law is uh, mistaken at times. Okay, let me go on. Through all the changes that Daniel faced, taken from his home country, taught a new language, and living through several kings, Daniel remains consistent in his walk with God. What is it that makes Daniel so consistent? It is the character that is formed through his devotion and connection to God. We can learn from Daniel how to have character in a culture that praises everything but godliness and integrity. As I mentioned, some believe that we are getting better and better. We're evolving. Well, uh, we will get better one day, right? One day we'll get glorified bodies. One day we'll <laughs> the Lord's going to bring his thousand-year reign. It, it, it is going to be better. But to think that we as man could just in of ourselves make this world better apart from God is false, okay? <laughs> we need God. Um, and so as we go through this world, we are going to face persecution. In 2 Timothy 3, 12, it states, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus might suffer persecution. No, the Bible says that shall suffer persecution. Will be. Uh, things will happen. Daniel encourages us uh, in uh, staying um, consistent. In Proverbs 14, 2, it states, He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. The Bible simply says there's people that are going to despise God. Are we, are we going to uh, honor God? Or are we going to despise what he says? I would hope we honor him. Number one, in our lesson today, Daniel is set up. Have you ever been set up? I remember in Bible college, I, uh, somebody tried to set me up on a date, and I'm like, nope, not that one. <laughs> Number one, I didn't want to be with her. Number two, uh, I got the best one here, okay? <laughs> but in Daniel chapter 6, verse 1 through 5, uh, Dar uh, uh, Daniel is living uh, under King Darius and the Bible says in verse 1 it says it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first that the princes might give accounts unto him that the king should not have damage and so well, why was Daniel set up? Well, he was different. He was peculiar. He took a stand when it was difficult as a teenager. Everything was business as usual in the new empire. Darius was setting up governors and administrators to keep the peace and to collect taxes. Isn't that the, the role of government to take all your money and, 
at tax season, you have to, you got to try to find all your deductions. And you probably never did this, but one year I thought I was going to get a big return. And so I spent, I like to spend, okay? And I, oh, I didn't get that return. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> But it's the job of government to collect taxes, make, you know, it, well, partly. But really, it was supposed to be the job of government to protect the people. <laughs> That's really what it was. But um, Daniel is different. He is distinguished different. And one of the reasons is, in Daniel 6.3, the Bible says, Then Daniel was preferred above the presence and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Somebody said attitude determines altitude. And so here, Daniel, he had an excellent spirit. He was in a pagan land. He had to learn a new language. He had a lot of things against him. Yet he rose above it, and he still had a, a good attitude. Daniel was a man of stability in a shaky world. Have you ever looked at somebody? I know you never did this, but I do it. So forgive me. But you ever look at somebody and say, man, they're kind of a sh shady. <laughs> they're kind of shaky. <laughs> they're not stable. Okay. <laughs> well, this is what Daniel was uh, stable because he trusted in his God. Daniel was also a man of purity in a dirty world. Dave, you told me you were in the military, right? Okay. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you <laughs> for your service. Amen. <laughs> A young soldier and his commanding officer got off a train together. The only available seats were across from an attractive young lady who was traveling with her grandmother. As the four engaged in conversation, the soldier and the young lady kept eyeing one another as there was an obvious mutual attraction. Suddenly, the train went into a tunnel, sending the train and, and cars into darkness. Immediately there was two sounds heard, the smack of a kiss followed by the, the whack of a slap across someone's face. As the floor came back into the light, the grandmother thought, I can't believe someone kissed my granddaughter. But I'm glad she gave him a slap he deserved. The commanding officer thought, I don't blame the boy for kissing the girl, but I'd wish her aim was better and that she had slapped him instead of me. The young, the young girl thought, I'm glad he kissed me, but I wish my grandmother hadn't slapped, me, slapped him for doing it. <laughs> and as the young soldier sat there smiling to himself, he thought, wow, I can't believe I got to lay a kiss on such a beautiful girl and slap my commanding officer all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the point? What's the point of this? It's easier to get away with certain things in the dark. But we see Daniel, he was honest. He had uh, integrity, whether it was in the dark or in the light. Okay, the Bible says he prayed three times a day. He, he was faithful. The Bible says in John 3.19, tells us that many love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. And so uh, uh, Daniel, he was uh, faithful. didn't matter uh, what day it was. I found a funny poem that says this. Before I heard the doctors tell the dangers of a kiss, I had considered kissing you, the nearest thing to bliss. But now I know biology and sit and sigh and moan six trillion mad bacteria, and I thought we were alone. I liked it, but anyway. Let me give you a, a quote here. Um, J.C. Ryle said this. He made some observations on holy living. Daniel lived a holy life in an unholy uh, Babylon. He was in Babylon, and he wasn't going to get out of Babylon. Uh, he was going to be there 70, the full 70 years in captivity. But he said this, A holy man will follow after spiritual mindedness. He will endeavor to set his affections entirely on things above and to hold on to the things of this earth with a very loose hand. He will not neglect the business of life that now is, but the first place of his mind and thoughts will be given for the life to come. He will aim 
to live like one whose treasure is in heaven and pass through this world like a stranger and a pilgrim traveling home. You know, don't you ever, don't you feel like a stranger sometime in this world? Don't you feel like you just, you try to fit in, but you don't quite fit in? It's because you're not home yet. When you get home, you will fit. Okay, you will, you will, um, you will be at home with God one day and uh, you will uh, be comforted in that. Daniel had character and he, he, and he was honored. He, uh, good things happened to him, not because he manipulated situations, even though he was surrounded by manip manipulators, wasn't Daniel? I mean, people are manipulating things. But the Bible says the king honored him because he had an excellent spirit. He had a good attitude. He was dutiful. One preacher said this, uh, Chuck Swindoll, he said this, the world needs men who cannot be bought, whose word is their bond, who put character above wealth, who, pos who possess opinions and a will, who are larger than their vocations, who do not hesitate to take chances, who will not lose their individuality in a crowd, who will be honest in small things as in great things, who will make no compromise with wrong, whose ambitions are not confined to their own selfish desires, who will not s say they do it because someone else does it, who are true to their friends through good report and evil report in adversity as well as prosperity, who do, not, who do not believe that shrewdness, cunningness, and hard-headedness are the best qualities for winning success, like winning at all costs. Who are not ashamed or afraid to stand for the truth that it, when it is unpopular, who say no with emphasis, although all the rest of the world says yes. I thought that was kind of a good word. And I kind of pictured Daniel as one of these types of men that we could follow as a, uh, uh, in the Bible as a biblical example. Daniel was doing what the Apostle Paul said in Colossians 3, uh, 23 and 24. It says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Daniel was dutiful and diligent, and the other leaders couldn't find any. They couldn't find anything wrong with him, but something concerning his God. Only uh, what they could find out was that he prayed three times a day, and so they had to make a, str a strategy to get him. In Daniel chapter six, verse six. It says, Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and, and thus said unto him, King Darius, live forever. So kind of buttering him up, kind of say, Man, live forever, king. And we want to live forever with you. Amen. <laughs> but then they go on in verse 8. It says, And all the presidents of the kingdom and the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish the royal statue. You know what? That's a lie. They said, we've consulted with everybody, and we've come up with this statute. They did not consult with Daniel about this, okay? And so, but the king bought into the lie, and he kind of bought into that pride. He's like, oh yeah, for 30 days, nobody worship anybody but me. Oh yeah, that sounds pretty good. I'll sign that into law. And they would, uh, back then, the law of the Medes and the Persians, it could not be reversed. I think uh, what they did was they, they sealed it with a signet these laws, and they could not be reversed. And so they played upon his pride, and in the end he saw, signed this law. Then we see, secondly, that Daniel was locked up. He was locked up. You'd think that as a Christian, man, you're, you're, as a believer in God, that everything's going to go well. But sometimes, the harder you try to live for Christ, the worse things get, instead of better. And Daniel found this in his life to be the case. So what did Daniel do when he found that this law had been signed? The Bible says he rose up as before and went and prayed three times a day. 
And then what do these conniving uh, leaders, uh, uh, people do? Well, they, they got to the king and said, hey, there's somebody that's not obeying your law. We got, we got to take care of him. So what can we learn from Daniel? From Daniel, we learn that real faith or trust in God can, can stand even in the most difficult of times. Often we do not know if our faith is genuine or counterfeit. Sometimes it takes trials and tribulations and troubles to, to, to test our faith. If, if Daniel stood on the old Mosaic law of sacrifices or tracing his lineage, in, lineage back to Abraham as his right to receive all God's promises, all God's blessings, he would have been bitter and lost his faith. Counterfeit faith is to believe that God is only sovereign when things are going smoothly, <laughs> when it's smooth sailing. But God is also God even in the bad times. One stated this, states this, Faith is similar to having uh, a fool's gold. Some, while shallow uh, pleasure-seeking faith, they might fool themselves or others with their attitudes that, that God, uh, uh, towards God, but it won't fool God. Daniel's tribulations were not meant to break him, but to make him, okay? And so sometimes think bad things come into our lives. You know, there's that verse, um, a lot of people point to, Rome, I think it's Romans 8, 28, says that all things work together for good to those that love God. So for things to work out, you, you got to love God, okay? It's not just like all things work out, okay? No, we got to love God. And it says, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Sometimes God has a different purpose than we would purpose. Sometimes God has a different path than what we would want to walk on. Sometimes uh, things don't make sense. Sometimes we don't understand where God is leading us. But it's not our job to understand. It's our job to follow and submit to God what he wants. And this is what Daniel did. They were, I could see, uh, uh, they were rubbing their hands with glee. Oh, we got Daniel. Ray Pritchard said this statement. He said, doing right doesn't mean everything will always go right. And so, uh, and for Daniel's life, we see that it, it, things didn't always go right. Number three, Daniel was let go. Daniel, you know, he spent that night in the lion's den. But the Bible says that God had sent his angel to, to close the lion's mouths. But, you know, when Daniel was going in that den, he didn't know for sure, like if he would come out. And uh, we know another time in Daniel's life where uh, he, uh, different challenges that he, 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 uh, that he faced that he is, he's willing to do right no matter what the cost was. And we can learn much from this. And so um, Daniel got to experience God in the lion's den. And sometimes uh, that's where we experience God. When we go through the difficult times, we can see God come through. I'm sure we can, we can tell each other stories of the times that God has come through for us. I remember one time, I think I, I told a story, but uh, uh, we were um, traveling th to Georgia. On, uh, they call it deputation, and we're raising uh, support to come to Canada. And uh, we were in... Um, I was about, I was actually literally about a mile from my exit, a mile and a half, and my car just stopped. Like, but you know, what was weird about this was we were just in a small, wasn't like the car we have, it was a, a was it a Honda? And a small car, and that car, I thought, this is weird, but we literally coasted like for a mile and a half, and it was pretty level. As soon as we got to the exit, there was, uh, within like a, a minute or two, there was a tow truck guy to help us. When the car was brought into the shop, the really amazing part was, they said, you shouldn't be here. 
There's no reason why you made it to Georgia. You went like 400 miles. There is no way your car, this was, it had a carburetor. They said your carburetor is 100% blocked. You shouldn't even be here. And then, uh, yeah. And then uh, the church that we were supposed to be in actually canceled on us. And we were uh, in another church that we didn't even plan on being in. And they took us on for support. And so um, we, I'm sure you have your stories. I have uh, many stories. But God, uh, God will honor you. God will honor them that honor him. Um, in uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 23, if you see this, it says, then, then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner was, hurt, was, was found upon him. And why was this? The Bible says, because he believed in his God. You know, um, for, for God to do good things in our lives, we, we do have to have some faith. We have to have faith in what he can do. And Daniel had a strong faith that he exercised in his God. We see God's justice when those that maliciously lied about Daniel were brought and thrown into the lion's den. I'm sure Daniel wasn't happy to see like people thrown into the lions. I'm sure it didn't bring happiness to him. I don't think he was a vengeful, vindictive person. But this is what happened to him. Or to, not to him, but to these people. And the same is in our lives. Uh, those that mock God, mock Christ, mock us sometimes, and we give a witness, there is a judgment day coming. I know, I know uh, some say everything is going to get better, and as long as we all just love one another, we're all, and we're all going to heaven. Well, the Bible says that God is going to deal with, with people on an individual basis. The Bible says, God, there's a verse that says, though hand be joined in hand, the wicked will not go unpunished. And so some people think if they're in a group, uh, maybe a group that um, when they stand before God because they're in a special group, therefore they will go to heaven. No, no, it's not individual relationship. It's based on what we, like, uh, people do with God. Okay, number four, uh, God was lifted up. Isn't, isn't that what you want today, God to be lifted up? Amen. I want God to be lifted up in Maranatha Baptist Church. Uh, I want him to be honored in our church and what we do. He was lifted up by Daniel's consistent godly lifestyle. He was consistent again with his, with his walk with God. He prayed. We know that he had holy habits. We know that he prayed three times a day. Again, down, uh, if you look back in verse 10, Daniel 6.10, it says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before the God, for his God, as he did aforetime. And so here, uh, Daniel prayed three times a day when things were going well. He prayed three times a day when things were going bad. He was faithful. He was, he was committed. No matter what the cost was, Daniel was more concerned about God's name than his own comfort. And Daniel was rewarded. Daniel is a picture of Jesus who 600 years later would come and they would find no fault in him. The Bible says that Jesus, he, he, was, he was silent before his accusers. He was silent. He, the Bible says he opened not his mouth. Just like Daniel, when all these people opened their mouths and were accusing Daniel, we don't see Daniel yelling, screaming, words of getting back. We just see that he was faithful. And just as Daniel went down into the lion's den, the Bible says when Christ was on the cross, in Psalms it says this words, it wasn't a physical, it was spiritual, but he says, dogs have compassed me about the bulls of Bashan. Compassed me about, and that was spiritual. It wasn't just a bull, like a cow in a field, it was uh, evil. <laughs> 
And so we're going to go through these times. We could go through uh, difficult times as well. But the main thing is God being lifted up in our lives. In closing, there was a... Uh, outside of Jerusalem, there's a valley called the Hinnom Valley. Hinnom Valley. It's a place that Jesus had in mind when he talked about hell. The Hebrew word for the valley is Gehinnom, and the Greek word is Gehenna. The Hinnom Valley was located on the south side of the city of Jerusalem. It was a very dark place. And many believed it was the valley of the shadow of death where David talked about in Psalms chapter 23, verse 4. Valley of the shadow of death. The Hinnom Valley is a place where horrific things took place. It was also the place, we talked about abortion, it was a place where people sacrificed their babies to the god, false god Moloch, as part of their worship. Um, and this brought a, real, a lot of anger to God in Deuteronomy 18.10. It's that God was angry with these people because they were giving, they're letting their sons and their daughters, the Bible says, pass through the fire. After the Jews returned from the Babylonian exile, so Daniel, uh, these Jews that returned, the valley became a garbage dump and was considered unclean. Dead animals and bodies and executed criminals were put into the sanitation dump. Jerusalem sits on a hill and this was in a valley and the filth just flowed down. In fact, they would start fires burning nonstop to stop the stench of the waste and the corruption that was there. Because of the smoke and darkness, this valley was a very scary place to pass through. It was so dark that one could not see their hand in front of their face at times. Jesus thought of this kind of place when he, when he mentioned hell. It was a place of death, darkness, and a place of waste. It is a valley of the shadow of death, an evil place. Again, David said in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Ironically, what can, we, what can we see from this? The good thing that grew from Gehenna was mustard trees. These mustard trees were born from a minuscule mustard seed. Jesus had said that if we have the faith of the grain of a mustard seed, we could say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. We know that a mustard seed is a smallest, one of the smallest of seeds, but it grows into a great tree. And so uh, Jesus was saying, even if you have a small faith, it can, it can grow into great faith. But in addition, it also meant that the smallest faith grows in the darkest valley, can find its way through the filth and the death of this world, and can shine a light so that others may see the glory and not be afraid. The glory of God and not be afraid. In A.D. Um, 398, John Chrysotum was appointed Patriarch of Constantinople, where his zeal for reform antagonized the Empress Exodia, who had him exiled. Allowed to return after a short time, Chrysotum again infuriated Eudoxia, who sent him away again. How did Chrysotum respond to such persecutions? With these words, this is what he said. What can I fear? Will it be death? But you know that Christ is my life and that I shall gain by death. Will it be exile? But the earth in all its fullness is the Lord's. Poverty I do not fear, riches I do not sigh for, and from death I do not shrink. That was today, uh, today in the Word. Um, and so, as we look at these few things about the life of Daniel, I pray that that can be a blessing, and that we could be encouraged to, do, uh, to have a confident and a courageous faith for the Lord. Why don't we stand and we'll uh, sing our closing hymn at the cross. <laughs> we sang this two weeks ago. We'll sing it again here. But, uh...